Hello, my name is Kathy, and today I'll be discussing planting schedules using the position of the moon. As an astrologer, I have researched and conducted multiple experiments to check out the validity of planting at certain times of the moon's monthly cycle, and I have determined that there are very positive results when planting at the correct time of the month. I have lived in situations where I was sharing gardens with others who did not believe that it mattered when you planted. And so I've witnessed the results firsthand on the health and vitality of plants grown without taking this aspect into consideration. I did several double-blind experiments with planting the same plants in the same soil but at different times of the month. The only difference being what time of the month the seed was planted and there were dramatic differences. I noticed marked differences in the germination rate for the seed for one and the general health and vitality of the resulting plants. And I also noticed less insect damage on plants started at the correct time of the month. I kid you not, this really works. In a societal collapse situation, you will not be able to get as specific about planting times as I'm going to outline in this video. But in general, if you plant crops that bear above ground in the first two weeks of a new moon, and crops that bear underground from the full moon to the new moon, you will be doing a lot better than average. And in a survival situation, you need to stack as many cards in your favor as possible to ensure that you're going to be harvesting a decent crop. The general rule of thumb time to plant a vegetable garden is in mid to late May. Some things can be started earlier, but this is a general rule of thumb in North America. And so, mid to late May arrives, but the moon's position is not cooperating. What then? I have had this happen to me in the past and I have waited until the early part of June to plant at the correct time of the moon and my gardens were amazing. I used to have people specifically drive past my house to see how well my garden was growing. My gardens were a little bit uh, famous in the area. In other years, if it felt and looked right to me, I would plant in the early part of May to catch the correct cycle of the moon and that worked out well too. You really have to be careful about uh, freezings and things of this nature if you try that though. So as a general rule of thumb, plant within the first two weeks of a new moon. One trick I used to use was to soak my large seeds like squash, peas, beans at the correct time of the month and then plant them out in the garden when weather permitted as that is another consideration of planting. But if you had to prioritize, I would definitely get the seeds in the ground at the correct time of the month regardless. Now, to get a little bit more specific. At the time of the new moon and continuing on through the following week, the lunar gravity pulls water up. Think of the ocean's tides. This causes the seeds to swell and burst. This is what you want. This factor, coupled with the increasing moonlight, creates a nicely balanced root and leaf growth. This is the best time for planting above ground annual crops that produce their seeds outside of the fruit. Examples of this are lettuce, spinach, celery, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, and all the grain crops. Cucumbers, like this phase of the moon, as well, even though they are exceptions to the above rule. The second quarter phase of the moon, of the second week after the moon, in other words, the gravitational pull of the moon is less, but the moonlight is strong. It therefore creates strong leaf growth. It is generally a good time for planting, especially two days before the full moon. The types of crops that prefer the second quarter are annuals that produce above ground, but their seeds form inside the fruit, such as beans, melons, peas, peppers, 
squash, and tomatoes. After the full moon and the week that follows, as the moon wands, the energy is drawing down. The gravitational pull is high, creating more moisture in the soil, but the moonlight is decreasing, putting energy into the roots. This is a favorable time for planting root crops such as beets, carrots, onions, potatoes, and peanuts. In the fourth quarter, or about one week before the new moon, um, this, is, this is when a decrease in the gravitational pull and in moonlight is most apparent. It is considered a resting period, so don't plant anything at this time. The best things to do at this time of the moon cycle are to cultivate, weed, and prune. Now we're going to get down to even more specifics regarding planting times. Here we will be discussing the actual astrological moon positions for planting. First off, in a societal collapse situation, finding the astrological planting time is not as difficult a thing to determine as you might imagine. The, um, uh, there are 30 days to the sun takes 30 days to travel through an astrological sign. 30 days. So, if your new moon in May, at, at the end of May, uh, that would happen, oh, about 2-3 degrees into Taurus at this particular point in time. So, when you have a new moon at that point. Your new moon is going to be about three or four degrees Taurus. There are, uh, it takes two and a half days for the moon to traverse a zodiacal sign. So, the moon takes this amount of time and it goes in a clockwise fashion from Aries to Taurus, to Gemini, to Cancer, to Leo, to Virgo, to Libra, to Scorpio, to Sagittarius, to Capricorn, to Aquarius, and then finally to Pisces. So if your new moon is happening in late May, you know that this is a, is a Taurus new moon. And if it's in late May, late May, that means it is... Uh, in the latter degrees of Taurus, almost into Gemini. So you have the new moon, and probably a day after that new moon, your moon is going to be into Gemini. Okay. So, all you have to do then is figure that the moon changes its position every 2.5 days, roughly. So, you know, uh, say, say your new moon is on the 20th of May, as an example, okay? Um, 20th of May, that's going to put, uh, that's the very last part of Taurus. So, on the 21st of May, the moon is going to be in Gemini at that particular point in time. So, 2.5 days, then it's going to be in Cancer, and so forth, all the way through. It's really not that difficult once you get into it. From this, you can determine the general zodiacal position of the moon pretty easily. Another thing to understand is that there are 13 new moons in a year. The moon cycle is always 28 days. So you can figure out for yourself when the new moons will happen well in advance and what day they will, they will happen so that you are able to figure out the zodiacal position for any given date without using the use of any kind of a book. So this isn't as difficult as it may at first appear. The ancients planted at the correct times of the moon, and they certainly did not have books to consult on the topic. The number one best zodiacal moon sign to plant anything is Cancer. The moon in Cancer is incredible, and if at all possible, you should try to plant your garden during its influence. Next to the moon in Cancer comes the moon in Scorpio and Pisces. After these signs, comes the moon in Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. But seriously, strive to plant under Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces, if at all possible. And Cancer definitely tops the list. The air sign moon positions are not that fertile to plant under. Try to avoid them, if at all possible. These are the moon in Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. 
The fire sign moon positions are also not that great. These are the moons in Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. Now, there are exceptions, of course. Anything that flowers does love to be planted during the moon in Libra. But in general, the air and fire moons are the best times to do weeding, cultivating, and pruning as a general rule of thumb. As you can imagine from the above discussion, it is a really good idea to plan your garden well in advance of your planting date. Figure out your companion planting schematics and then calculate in the best moon times for planting the various crops that you are planning. Remember too that the best laid plans can fall up through inclement weather and when whatever else hat life wants to throw at you. So figure out your best times but have a couple of alternative times figured out as well. And as a general rule of thumb, if you plant from the new moon to the full moon, it will be at least acceptable. Try your best, but don't beat yourself up if it can't happen for some reason. Well, that's it for now. To stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button right below this video. Take care.